Hello and welcome to a new episode of The Other Russian. And today I'm going to talk to you about sustainability. Right? So, yeah, I haven't come up with any hooks that I'm going to use. Yeah, let's just switch here and, you know, stick to throughout the recording. I'm not yet there in terms of the preparation for the upcoming recording. I typically just improvise. So, yeah, let's try and dig into this magnificent topic. And again, one of the reasons I use it is that I've been advised by some wise entity to do it. So we'll see how it goes in terms of uh, increasing number of uh, subscribers or viewers or people who leave comments or throw some crypto in those nice wallets up there. But yeah, why sustainability? In the previous episode, I mentioned that I've been on this IMD's webinar by uh, the Dr. Goldsworthy was her surname, her surname. So she was delivering that speech about the sustainability practices and the well-being practices and providing some data in terms of how people feel. And I'm going to try and get use some of that data. Um, hopefully, I won't get sued. I, I probably won't because, you know, that type of information is not under NDA or anything like that. So, yeah, I have a second screen. I'm going to take a smooth or not, not so smooth. Let, let's try and, uh, yeah, let's give it a go with, uh, with this. We'll see how, yeah, how about that? How about that? Yeah, there you go. So, um, top global risks by severity. Yeah. What am I looking here? Um, just to some of the things that she mentioned. So cost of living crisis is a short term thinking. So global picture and long term thinking is about um, the fact that we are about to be fucked up as the entire human species and our planet. So, yeah, talking about the topics that I probably should choose at some point in time and stick to them. Definitely going to talk more about the psychedelics and the use of them in their life. But my wife offered a new direction, which is how to survive nowadays being a white hetero cis, cis hetero white male, right? Yeah, probably. But we'll see. Depends, right? I mean, I need to get used to it. So as you can see, the climate change is the big thing here. And uh, with the climate change, we've talked about this topic before. You can, you know, have your own opinion about it or inclination about it or whatever the fuck you think about global climate change, regardless of what you think actually is happening. So, yeah, I mean, the problems are inevitable, the, the heat waves, the droughts and everything like that. So the thing here is that the problem that people are trying to address sits in a very different direction. Typically, I'm going to use this phrase by this um, wonderful lawyer. Yeah, I'm going to show a screen to you in a moment. And actually, I do apologize for the, the fonts and everything. It was just a screenshot from a webinar. So, you know, it, it's been there. It's not mine. But... Yeah, just wanted to show you that this particular phrase actually kind of nails down the reasons and of a problem and, you know, describes the problem in the first place. So, yeah, there it goes. So the importance of, well, yeah, the topic wasn't changing leadership, uh, but yeah. So, quote unquote, I used to think the top environmental problems were biodiversity loss, ecosystem collapse, and climate change. I thought that 30 years of good science could address these problems. I was wrong. The top environmental problems are selfishness, greed, and apathy. And to deal with these, we need a cultural and spiritual transformation. And we scientists don't know how to do that. So, great phrase in my view, great understanding. Again, why leadership and why sustainability and leadership of all sorts. So we're not talking about only like G7, G20. We, who are we? But yeah, let, let's pretend it never happened. So yeah, again, talking about the Gs and everything, the leaders there are in charge of drafting policies for the entire communication, um, collaboration, and engagement and movement towards progress of the entire humankind right 
And there are other type of leaders that are running commercial or, well, yeah, mainly commercial world because for non-governmental structures or non-profit structures, typically it is clear that, yeah, sustainability is key. And actually, if you ask people, yeah, I mean, definitely people would tell you that climate change is important, right? I mean, nobody would want to live in a world that would end in five years from now probably although there are some cases and by the way talking about the topic the, the depression that i mentioned before about the psychedelics use of um uh, in, in terms of therapy for depression as well so i'm reading this book uh well actually I finished yeah on microdosing on psilocybin so yeah i'm definitely going to talk about it at some point in time but yeah the idea there is that there are clinical trials happening that um, confirm effectiveness of psilocybin for depression, which means that entire pharmacological industry is of um, being under, I, I, I don't know, well, what word to use here exactly to describe like how fucked entire pharma industry could, could be. But then again, pharma industry is not interested in allowing mushrooms to thrive because uh, it's about their profits. And then talking about other companies that I mentioned before, like DuPont and the book that I mentioned earlier about hemp uh, called The Emperor Wears No Clothes. So again, there are big corporations that are in charge of drafting policies and changing and then shaping the world according to their needs and in, in, in line with their financial goals and aspirations of leaders so it is important to speak with those leaders to speak with people who are well not only leaders of today but leaders of the future so there are definitely some things that leaders need to take into consideration one of such things is this understanding of sustainability so whatever the fuck you're doing you are impacting mother earth in one way or the other so there is carbon footprint there are other things that you use business and person do so i'm not gonna you know teach you here or educate you on the topic of what to do and not to do in terms of i don't know disposing garbage how to process plastic from glass and metal there are other people who do it although maybe at some point in time i should speak about it because it's still important for the topic of sustainability at least however not the point not today today talking about leadership and changing their perceptions so we can think of sustainability as something that people understand as a concept probably so what is sustainability is like permanent like i don't know continuousness of something that you know happens so more of a less disruptive more kind of in line with nature let's put it this way so there are many businesses there are many practices there are many non-governmental structures and in in all countries in, on this wonderful planet that are involved in trying to put some efforts towards reverse engineering the climate change. But the problem is that the corporations are there and the corporations are ruled by people, well, not ruled, but managed, but lead led by people. So those people, they are the ones that shape the narrative for the entire humankind so there are people and probably there is some problem with the recording i don't know i mean my pc is just mac just killing me but anyway hopefully the sound is there and you at least can hear me so what i was saying is that those people are shaping the future life on earth basically because yeah i mean my die you die at some point in time we all die and then what happens next right so if you don't care about your life then fuck it i mean it's your right your life do whatever the fuck you want but if you're facing problems if you lost meaning to life yeah just speak with professionals get you know a hero dose of uh psilocybin in a controlled the friendly environment i'm not you know advocating for people do it like absolutely stupidly just do the research talked about the research in the previous episode 
gather information and you know change something in rewire your brain basically because there's scientifically proven data that it helps and it works and it can help you as well so ask get information and you know take care of yourself but yeah going back to the sustainability and the people that are in charge the, the, the few words there so selfishness greed and apathy they are the ones that are bringing people humankind towards the brink of an app and I don't know what the fuck am I saying here, but anyway, so to the entire collapse of uh, that are humankind. So if you don't care about your life, think about the life on Earth in general, like the relatives that you have, or if you don't have relatives, then in general, like humankind. And there are these uh, Hollywood bad people there, not Hollywood, not people in Hollywood that are bad, but the, the people that, that are being portrayed by Hollywood and all those. 007 spy movies that want to destroy the world because they have their own vision of how the world should work but yeah just those people i don't know wait what the fuck is happening with my cpu but my feed is just breaking hopefully it's just not that bad but anyway yeah so going back to those people who are in charge of those corporations they should be the ones uh that need to be aware of everything that's happening so i'm here for you guys don't worry but the, what you need to understand is that earth is one and only and we may look out there and search for a new home but before we get there it's going to take some time right so what we definitely need to do right now is think all together about how are we going to uh, work and what we can do to save mother earth right I hope this podcast is not becoming boring, but yeah, a lot of self-doubt. They, I'm, I'm sensing this imposter syndrome. So some dude out there sits and talks about the topics they does doesn't know much about. Like, what the fuck is he doing? But anyway, I'm just spreading the information, sharing in case somebody might like it or you learn something new about it. So going back to the topic of the leadership and that um, webinar. So that webinar was targeted for people specific people who are the leaders of today and there were some really interesting concepts that have been discussed so let me try and do one more time and open my middleboard or myra or whatever the fuck by the way russian company originated from permian uh, nowadays with hq in netherlands so there are things that happen um with people and once they yeah so there are some nice slides here i know that you don't see them but i'm just gonna go there at some point in time so th that entire webinar was built around the well-being and i'm gonna show you a slide that was used there for you know showcasing the level of stress that is taking place externally and internally so yeah i mean the picture i challenged it there then and there i've uh, written a comment in chat saying that actually marijuana has positive effect on um, well many aspects of life actually it heals tumors surprisingly it is in dinosia medicine it heals wounds and i mean just read the book it's all there uh, nowadays do the, your research by yourself find the data gather data make your own mind but yeah the idea there is that it helps alleviate stress alleviate right get rid of stress so i use the use some text and put the message over there in the webinar and the, in the webinar chat and then the lady the doctor goldsworthy she said yeah it's a great comment absolutely relevant it does help it's just the image that was used there is not the best variation of it same goes with alcohol right because it's there i mean nobody challenges but yeah there we go the joint the glass but yeah the excess of consumption is something that you definitely need to be aware of or uncontrolled consumption but the thing here is that it is happening with people so how am i going to combine all this sustainability leadership and drugs under one narrative you might think yeah easy peasy and so basically uh what happens is that people are in charge of big corporations or mid-size or small corporations or private businesses they are 
the ones who are feeling anxiety they're depressed they're stressed and the majority of uh, executives are in survival mode basically and this is some data gathered from observations of people's mood and actually this is the same kind of square zone that i use i mentioned to you before an app called how we feel so it's pretty much the same depending what type of feelings you're feeling throughout the day they are placed in either of those quadrants here right and yeah so the majority of people is here um, well i myself am here and here from time to time that depends but then again so people are experiencing this stress so they definitely need to feel this or not necessarily feel but yeah just disconnect from that stress from that anxiety from that overload with information the burnout feeling and that burnout feeling by the way it is very common among youngsters so they say that you know new latest generation or however it's called so basically young people who are of age like 16 to like 25 or something like that so they're burned out already right and th th this is happening and people just uh, get on with it there is this epidemic of antidepressants uh, all over the world actually not only in well russia at least i mean i've heard a lot of my friends that are all using antidepressants because how else are you going to live in russia and <laughs> not use antidepressants so yeah i mean there are other ways of course right so we've talked about microdosing before fly agaric or yeah red mushroom that i mentioned at some point in time there are other things but yeah again to get rid of that stress and get sense of connectedness substances like psilocybin can help and once a you know here dose is used and it then can help people get a entirely like new perspective that sense of connectedness with the entire humankind with nature first of all actually and then with the entire universe it gives a different understanding of what life is and if it, it brings to some people a sense of fulfillment and, and purpose not purpose like you know i'm gonna save a planet starting tomorrow different type of purpose the well first of all there's therapy uh psychedelic assisted therapy and there is a, a call on psychedelic coaching happening uh today uh, between me and the person from one of the businesses that is involved in educating in psychedelics so yeah i'm doing more research right so what am i talking about here is that there is this other concept so sustainability right if you dissect it there are things like well mother nature suffers because of the carbon carbon footprint because of the corporations that are using technologies that are harmful for mother earth like uh pesticides in monsanto or uh well i mean it's my opinion you can double check me but Brent, uh, and in an article <laughs> let's put it this way where it was said out loud but other of course companies dupont mentioned before and there are other companies who are you know harming mother earth so they definitely are there right and there are new people who are either there that they control those companies or either getting there at some point in time so so the decisions that are being made are made by people not by companies not by ai hopefully <laughs> but we'll see about that so people definitely need to understand like what the fuck does sustainability mean it means that you need to take care of fucking mother earth that gave life to you so how do you do it just small fucking steps but going back to the topic and the, the one that i've started with so at that point in time in the webinar i've uh, thrown an idea that you know among those coping things that um, are required to take place in order for a person to relieve to be relieved of that stress is psychedelics so again the dr goldsworthy confirmed my uh, 
hypothesis that yeah it is indeed a great tool to bring this connection between people and nature so at that point in time yesterday when i was on that webinar and i heard this from her lip saying it from you know one of the best business school in the world i was sitting there like fuck yeah i'm not delusional <laughs> So, yeah, I I have yeah you know, seriously I have these theories in my mind and then they sometimes they just confuse me in a way that I see it clearly you know so it makes sense for me but then once I try to explain to somebody people tend to not be able to comprehend like what the fuck am i talking about here exactly because of many ways probably because i communicate in very strange big or unorthodox phrases and i think that the reason uh, it happened is that when i was young and I, when i was learning english so i mentioned probably this story in one of my previous podcasts but yeah i was being told by the teacher to read Charles Dickens on Sunday morning instead of watching Disney cartoons at the age of 10. And I was pissed. Like, I was so pissed because I couldn't get a, any understanding of Dickens because of his fucking phrases. I mean, phrase is like just one sentence is like this big. So I, I, I literally cried my eyes out i couldn't figure it out so probably i got traumatized by those events and never since i speak in those fucking strange big uh phrases but yeah that could be the reason the other reason could be is that not all people are kind of into topics like psychedelics uh, drugs and research by the what by the way because research is yeah well clinical trial research of psychedelics it's very like niche and nuanced so they mentioned to you before there's this podcast by beckley uh foundations called beckley waves or trip report there are fucking dozens of podcasts out there on psychedelics so you can listen to people you can listen to doctors you can listen to therapists you can listen to experts who know their shit and they have this information and it's extremely valuable information that demonstrates the healing capability of uh, sub such substances for human beings but the thing with uh, such substances is that well they were prohibited in the mid well second part of 20th century mainly by us well other countries just followed basically whatever the fuck us said and you know they prohibited and outlawed and i was like yeah sure let's do it all of a sudden right but if you think about it those substances they disrupt the capitalist world in a sense and uh, we live in a world where businesses are being created out of nothing um i mean of course like nothing material like not not a production line but you can write a code using even chat gpt or some other variations of tools that you need and then just you know do it I don't know, I'm just looking at my feet and it's fucking killing me. But yeah, anyway. Um, however, oh, it's fucking lost my thought. Yeah, right. So go slightly back and uh, talking about the substance. Yeah, disrupt capitalist world. So again, if you think about mushrooms, for instance, and psilocybin, it gives you this feeling of ego dissolvement you know and actually this is a topic that i'm gonna talk next so i'm gonna write it down like ego dissolvement or ego yeah just ego because this i think it's an important one it was there among one of the recommendations talking about that not only this but also this sense of connectedness that i mentioned before and then if you compare it with antidepressants that you need to take on a permanent basis for the duration of the, i don't know how many months and then you take one dose of uh, psilocybin and that's it so 
yeah, definitely there's damage for the big corporate world, which is represented by pharmaceutical companies and other companies, of course, like tobacco and alcohol companies. And by the way, some drugs are out there outlawed. And I, have you ever heard of a crime, like seriously documented a crime when somebody killed something being high on marijuana? No. I mean, find one, real one, that it did happen. But you can go and buy liquor, get shit-faced and kill somebody. Not a problem. No license. Just go to the store. Well, it depends, right? But of course, still, you can easily get alcohol and do nasty shit. Whereas with drugs, it's entirely different. But yeah, it's другое. другое. So, again... Pharma is being threatened, and then weeds is the same pretty much. But then again, the world doesn't need it because humans invented capitalism. Well, I'm not saying let's, you know, did commie shit is back and let's do communism once one more time. I mean, some people are trying to do it in this world. It's not going to work. No, I'm not saying that we need to dis destroy or dismantle the capitalist world. We just need to find a way. I mean, we as humans, right? So one species, we definitely need to find a way to gather our efforts in terms of the sustainable thinking, how we can make it a better world for ourselves, for those who come after us. It is actually a really nice matter for the... Well, I found it i don't know whether or not i was supposed to be there or whether or not i was supposed to read it this way but yeah if you remember one of the christopher nolan's movies uh interstellar like one of my top movies of all times i don't often re-watch movies but that movie i'm prepared to watch again and again so there was a character I don't remember who he was. He was portrayed by, by Matt Damon, so the scientist who was frozen on another planet and waiting desperately for somebody to come. So at some point in time, he decides to... Fuck, we're probably going to do a spoiler here. So spoiler alert, or just rewind for like three minutes, but not going to take longer than this. So yeah, he decides to sabotage the mission of um, the crew. And use the ship to get the fuck away of that frozen planet, right? And there, then and there, he re describes why he did it. Or at some point in time, it, it's being kind of uh, spoken out loud. So there is this humanity. Actually, probably it's like a red line that goes throughout the entire movie. <laughs> but yeah, so there is the personal level. Yeah, I think if you go deeper and think about the professor who stayed there um the father of uh and hathaway's character so he knew that yeah he's gonna die so he knew that there is something bigger than him like species survival and this is where we are so this is not future this is like reality metaphorical but reality and we definitely need to think about like us as species rather than us as separate human beings so for this to happen it is impossible pretty much to destroy an ego in a sense i mean it is, it is of course possible but yeah so we're all driven by ego Ooh, damn slight like teaser of the next episode probably but yeah we're ego driven creatures our ego is the reason for a start mass murder or like single murder or just doing some bad shit or saying some things that we're not supposed to be saying to another human being but our ego is something that are, well i wouldn't say like makes us do it because probably i don't think that there is like an entire control i think still there is conscious subconscious level however the subconscious level can be controlled through the consciousness However, still there are cases where the lizard brain is, you know, jumping to the first scene and makes a fucking decision uh, whether you want it or not. In those cases, really, in some cases, it may be really valuable. In some cases, it could create additional problems. But yeah, going back to the original uh, thought here is that that ego aspect, and it is critical for companies, for businesses, because it limits our 
our self. So that ego is about, you know, competition, about using more resources, about getting their first outside the other uh, of others like be on top of the world or the entire like value or what's the food chain and humans are already there right but then for this ego to fall apart and make this shift to eco which is you know thinking about our planet as a living system and we as a living kind be there in harmony like people power that we can use in harness for the greater good or the potential that we can do or you know just totally different approach to it for this to happen psychedelics can help there's research so ideally i mean you just give information to people who are in leading positions at uh, companies especially producing production companies the research on the topic of psychedelics show it to them uh, tell them you know that it can help them in terms of overcoming their anxiety or headaches migraines by the way or being healed with the psychedelics and um, marijuana it's proven i mean check check it out the research is out there the information is there so you can double check everything nowadays and yeah tell people they can help but then make sure that people don't take it on them own they take them on in a controlled environment and i mentioned to you before that there are businesses that are doing this psychedelic trips well not trips but retreats right and we've been studying them so what they're doing yeah i'm just gonna show you the research that we've done for the project that um, i'm working on in thailand so we, we've uh, researched different companies that are providing services, not only resorts in general, but those that have uh, like a specific program, right? So there are science-based retreats and uh, other types of retreats. So they provide healing services so they can help people. And uh, because they cost a lot, they are typically made for the big executives and C-suite people. So again, if you know somebody who could benefit from it, just bring this knowledge to them, let them decide for themselves. But you just need to break the stigma. Stigma is coming from the lack of knowledge. Nobody told us anything good about drugs when we were children. People were mainly trying to scare us into something, saying that marijuana is a first step to a needle or something like that. But yeah, I've been smoking marijuana for, I don't know, probably 15 years so far. Never tried needle, never going to. I mean, definitely not. <laughs> this is something that I don't do. Um, but yeah, um, actually not 15, how many? Yeah, well, probably, probably more than that. But anyway, that's not the point here. So again, just share the knowledge, subscribe, like, comment stay in touch and i'm gonna get back to you next time and talk about ego so thank you for watching but I, probably video is fucked up but i hope the sound's not that bad but yeah again thank you for this um i'll figure it out how it should work how to make it work better but yeah throw some donations i'm definitely gonna be motivated to figure it out sooner rather than later thanks for watching bye till next time